going to talk about that a little bit. Um, when you write a code, there are a whole bunch of different functions that you can perform. Um, one of the most useful ones is, oh, and I don't know what up and down on the D-pad is. You can actually find it in memory and look it up. But um, if you look at this, if you start your code with 0, 4, that instruction means write value y to address x. So it takes the value that you put here, literally whatever you want, and it writes it to the memory address that you specify at x. So there are actually there are a lot of codes that are just one line of code, and the whole thing the code does, we're actually going to make one, but the entire code is just it writes a specified value to a certain memory address. Similar to what I was just doing with changing Dr. Mario's percent, except it puts it in code form so you don't have to manually go in and edit the memory. Um, and then another uh, instruction you can give it is the 2-0 instruction. Um, this is for weird, by the way. Uh, I think Action Replay is a little different. It has 08 or OA or something like that. Um, but this says execute your code if the value at address x equals y. So you give it a memory address and you're saying uh, if the value at this address equals whatever you specify here, then execute your code. Um, so in some circumstances, and we'll actually we'll do something similar to that later as well, but in some circumstances you want to have like, you know, an if statement. If you've done programming before, then that should make plenty of sense to you. And then the last format that I have on this screen is the C2 format. And this is one of the most useful formats. Um, I would say the O4 and the C2 are what I use the most. Um, this says, basically, inject Y lines of assembly code into address X. Um, and what this allows you to do is, this allows you to actually change and add to the game's code. And we're going to be doing that later as well. But instead of just modifying memory addresses, you can actually inject your own code into the game and have it execute that. Um, if you want to look up the other different code types that you can use, because there's, there's a lot of them, and a lot of them are very useful, um, there are these two web pages for the weird code type documentation and the action replay code type documentation. Um, action replay is actually a little bit obsolete because Dolphin can use Gecko or weird codes for GameCube games, and I think actually if you start GameCube games using Gecko on the Wii, um, or other loaders, I think you can also use Gecko codes for those. So, it's time for another demo. We're going to be writing our first action replay code. It's going to be one line long, so it's not going to be very exciting. But, it's a good introduction, so, let's see bring up a uh, dolphin. Actually, I'm probably going to bring up notepad in a second, but we just messed around with changing player 2's percent damage, so what we're going to do is we're going to write a code that prevents player 2 from taking damage. So, let me uh, bring up a new document here, and you don't have this in front of you unless you wrote it down for whatever reason, but player 2's percent is at this memory address, 80CB18D0. That is the memory address that holds player 2's percent. So if we want to write, write a code that messes with this in some way, in this case, I'm going to want to prevent player 2 from ever taking damage. Um, what I can use is, I can use in 04 code, uh, let me just go back to the slideshow real quick you can see that the 04 code says write value y to address x so what I can do is I can set y to 0 and I can write it to the address that holds player 2's percent and this executes every frame or possibly even more frequently I'm not sure but it'll make sure that player 2's percent damage is always set to 0 and that will never change 
So let me go back to Notepad here. So this is the address of player 2's percent. So I want to write a code that follows this format. That's an 04 code. And like I described, it takes the value that you specify at Y and it writes it to memory address X. In our case, our memory address is right up here, so we'll just put that in the code. You always have to start with 04, and then you actually take out the first two lines of this address. 80 is kind of just assumed. So I would do 04CB18D0. Um, if this does happen to be 81, then the 04 code actually turns into 05. Uh, so that's logical enough, and we're actually going to have to do that later. But anyway, so we have the first part of this code, which is specify the memory address. So now we just need to choose what to write to that address. So I will do 0. And we're done with our code. So this is our one-line code that every single frame it writes the value of 0 to player 2's percent damage. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to Dolphin. Um, I have the config file up right here. Um, you can do this in Dolphin itself as well. There's something where you can add AR codes. I think if you want to add gecko codes or weird codes, you actually have to open up this config file, which you can do by right-clicking the game, going to properties, and then going over to gecko codes and clicking on edit config. You can figure it out. It's, it's not hard. Um, so, have to start it with a dollar sign. Code start with a dollar sign. Um, player 2 doesn't take damage. And I'll paste our code. And I, this is a bug in Dolphin, but always include an empty line at the end of this file. Otherwise, it will actually delete your line of code. So always put an empty line here. And the last thing is, put a plus here, which indicates that the code is enabled. I could not do that, and I can go into Dolphin and check it off, but that's kind of hard to demonstrate on like a 360p stream. So I'll just do this, edit it in here, I'll save, and now our code is enabled. So, oh, G Master, I'm using Notepad++. Uh, yeah, you can just do a Google search and find it. It's a very robust and useful text editing document that supports tabs and all kinds of really useful like macro features. Um, and it has formatting built in for all different kinds of uh, code. So anyway, I just saved this file. So now we're going to go back to Dolphin. And start up melee, see if it works. And by the way, you also have to go into Dolphin's config and check enable cheats. Otherwise, your codes just will not activate. And I already did that, so. Oh yeah, and to wait, did my okay? Never mind. Yeah, to open up um to open up this ini file, um you can hold on. Is my is my audio still working? Because it sounds like it got cut out. Okay, good. Just making sure. Um. Yeah, so you can, in Dolphin, and uh, this is just hard to demonstrate on a 360p stream, but you can right-click on the game, go to Properties, and then go over to Gecko Codes, um, and click on the Edit Config button, and it opens it up in uh, Notepad for you. I think you might be able to set it to open up in Notepad++ somehow, but I usually, like, you can just do a, a file open, and, um, well, let me go back to Notepad real quick, but... You can do a file open, and these uh, codes are at uh, dolphin slash user slash game config. And dolphin already includes like a bunch of game configs, so you just have to search like the code for your game. 
Uh, in this case, it's gale01.ini, and you can open it there like that. And it has some other stuff in it as well, just like random stuff that Dolphin uses. Uh, I would recommend not messing with it because they're already optimized on a per game basis. Uh, so anyway, let's go back to the game. Yeah, so we just wrote a code that should prevent player 2 from taking damage. Let's see if it works. It does work. You'll notice when I attack him, the percent down there is still updating. Because the graphic updates independently of the actual damage. Um, so you'll still see like 3 or 2 percent, but you'll notice that his damage is not increasing. Every time I hit him, like his damage is definitely just at zero. So our code worked. We successfully wrote a code that prevents player 2 from taking damage. And I can show you this in the memory as well. Um, we're still at the memory address that we were using. Um, this is the address for player 2's damage, and as I hit him, this address just does not change. It always stays at zero. Because we have the code that every single frame it's just writing zero to that address. So, not a particularly useful code, but it's our first one. <laughs> and it definitely goes over the basics. We've learned how to write our first code. Um, but at this point, I think we can move on. Or if anyone has any questions, then I can go over those quickly as well. Oh yeah, every time you edit the config and you save it, um, Dolphin only looks at the config when you launch the game, so you don't have to restart Dolphin or anything like that. You just save the config and you start the game. But you do have to, you do have to quit the game and start it again, like when you edit the config. Um, as for what Longdart said, um, I'm actually, yeah, I'm actually not sure, um, I think they, I think they do actually run every frame, um, not every engine update, I'm actually not sure where Gecko attaches itself, um, in the game code, but... Um, it might be associated with the frame draw, or it might be associated with some other, some other update. Yeah, the next thing I'm going to go over is to, um, find, find these memory addresses yourself. So, let's do that. To do this, we will be using Dolphin's Cheat Search. Um, and this is a technique that has existed for a long time. Um, since, well, from what I know, the 90s, because GameShark used it for Nintendo 64. Um, and this is also the main premise of the PC program Cheat Engine, which is again, useful for more than making cheats. You can actually use it to help you mod games and other things. Um, one time I was taking an online exam that was run in JavaScript, and uh, that's
that's all I need to say about that. Um, I'm not familiar with the game Genie. It may have incorporated